Well, praise the Lord. I am Pastor Inman, and you're now listening to the Word of Deliverance, and we got some really great things for you. Got with me Melanie Bidimo. She's the host of our program with Michelle Patton and Mark McComas. Great people of God, very dedicated and very knowledgeable. And Melanie, I want you to tell the people where we're at today. Amen. Um, as we've been speaking of um, the Second Peter, it's referring to um, give us an example of Balaam and, and how he was mad, and it was basically a mental disorder. And a lot of people today, I believe, suffer with the mental disorder and maybe are bound and don't even know how to be free. And again, there's um, many scoffers and mockers and, and false people that's been set out in the church that don't even teach about lust. And people don't even know what that is sometimes. Was it like he's, uh, Balaam, you said, was mentally ill? Was it uh -huh. kind of like for the lust of money? Yes. Wanting money. Yes. That can become mental illness it drove him to a mental illness because it it, it drove him mad to believe the, in lies yes driven by the lust nature and people underestimate the power of lust if you read john eight forty four, jesus talks about lust and he spoke unto those people he said you're your of your father the devil and the lust thereof you will do so lust is of satan I think lust is the nature of Satan, and that's what demons work through with people to control, manipulate, seduce, and keep them in a mental bondage is because of the lust. There's nothing good that comes from lust. There's okay. nothing prosperous. So that came from Genesis chapter 3 when Eve obeyed the serpent mm -hmm. and became free. Oh. I mean, that's what T.D. Jake says. Right. He, you know, this is what the serpent said. He says, you know, God just don't want you to, to be like him. Mm -hmm. You can know good from evil from yourself. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she taken, she did eat, and she became what? She became deceived. She was deceived, and she became full of the lust nature mm -hmm. because she saw it, she didn't have to have it, and she took it anyway. Amen. Amen. So now eyes are seeing things they don't have to see. That's mm -hmm. right. That's you why know? First John chapter 2, 15 and 16 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Now, there's some people listen to us every day, Melanie. They're not uh, able to really take heed to what we say. They feel like it's just too much to ask to really give my life to that much prayer and that much of the Bible. Mm-hmm. Some of the other people, you know, they, they don't really, they're not able to get free. So tell us why that this stuff here like Second Peter 3, verse 3, where it talks about these days, in the last days, people are actually dealing with a lot of lust here. Mm -hmm. I wonder why TBN don't ever talk about lust. Mm -hmm. Well, it says in this Second Peter 3, 3, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. So it says right there that they're walking after their own lust. So this is what's making them preach about this big money thing. Uh -huh. To get rich with big money. Yeah. So to give them money, you're supposed to get big money. Yes. So this is the idea that they use the Bible talking about reaping and sowing. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope that don't happen because a lot of people <laughs> are going to have a lot of mental illness in their life. Amen. Because if you give them any money, mm -hmm. uh, according to what they're teaching, then you've got to reap their harvest. Ooh. Amen. This is going along with Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. He says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, <laughs> but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall, turn, shall be turned into fables. So is this why he said in John chapter 3, Jesus preached that you must be born again? Yes. 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 Tell us a little bit more about that idea, Melanie. Well, as you're born again, Jesus had spoken, receive ye power to become the sons of God. So this power is what's imparted or implanted or installed within you to have the power to be the son of God. The Holy Ghost is what gives you the power to be the son of God. And without the Holy Spirit, without the Holy Ghost, you cannot be the son of God. Because to me, that's how you're born again, is by the Spirit, by the Word, by the truth. Is, is, and it all they, go, they all go together. The Holy Ghost. And it takes the Holy Spirit to even lead you to repentance. It takes the Holy Ghost to even give you um, the ability to even be able to think properly. 
Because how do you think that you'll be able to get your understanding from? My opinion, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, then you won't have any truth. Because according to John, what is it, 14, 17? The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. It takes the Holy Ghost to give you truth. And if not, you won't, all you have is the flesh and the lust. And guess what the devil came to do? Do lust. Lie. That's his job, to lie. A liar, and guess what you're going to do? believe lies. So again, it takes the Holy Ghost to even believe the truth. So that these guys haven't been born again, they probably believe that we come from tadpoles. Yes. Or Uh, something like that. Yeah. The Big Bang Theory and all that. Big Bang, come from a toad frog or whatever they call it. Apes. Apes, okay. Some of them believe that. I've Mm -hmm. heard different ideas, but I never did see a person that was a half frog and a half man or a half ape and a half man. They never did come up with that, did they? No. But they're really trying to get rid of God out of our system today. Yeah. They've taken God out of our school books. They don't want our children to believe in God. And they've got a lot more things in our school books that's reversed and that are not true. Yeah. I don't want to go into that right now. But, Brother Mark, people want to get rid of us. They really yeah. want to serve God. But TBN, Jonathan Kahn, and all these rabbi guys want to take them back under the law. And they want to get them to believe in a Judaism that they didn't even keep themselves, keeping laws that you, they don't even keep. And besides that, they're not in existence anymore. But yet they're still teaching the people about their crypto books, about these Shemitahs and the blood moons and all this stuff. And our Bible is really against that. Yes, it is. So tell us how people can get away from this less nature and how they can get rid of that so they can really serve God and be a brand new people. Some people want a brand new life. That's right, you know, and as, as we share these things for you, even in, in 2 Peter chapter 1, he talks about through the knowledge of Jesus Christ, can you live a victorious life, those things pertaining to life and godliness. And if you want to serve God and if you want to be free from all this lust and all these false doctrine and filled with the Holy Spirit, you can repent and ask Jesus. And I'm going to share a verse in Hebrews, and it goes with 9.14. This is what the blood of Jesus does for us and how we can live a victorious life. It says, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself up without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? So we see here that Jesus Christ has done it. His blood is enough, and we understand, and it gives an example in Hebrews 9, 18 through 22, how that we have to be sprinkled with the blood of Jesus. And Moses did this back in Exodus with, with the people of God, back in Exodus chapter 24. And we have to be sprinkled with, with the blood of Jesus. Our conscience will be sprinkled. We ask for repentance. We receive the Holy Spirit. He gives us a victorious life through the knowledge of Jesus Christ to live life and things to godliness. So we know that we have an escape. We don't have to follow them Jonathan Kahn's or Perry Stones or TBNs that are just focused on not even, they're focused on money and deceiving you and not showing you how you can live a victorious life. Yeah. There's a scripture um, I'd like to share. Acts 2.38 is one of our favorite scriptures. It says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Tell the people about repentance and what it is, Mel. Repentance is, my opinion, confession of your sins and asking God to forgive you and confess your sins before the Lord and tell God, say, I am a sinner and I need help. But I make a commitment today, dear God, if you forgive me my sins and shed the blood of Jesus Christ upon me, as Mark had stated in Hebrews 9, 14, Lord, I will keep your word and I will keep your commandments. Because 1 John chapter 1, verse 7 and verse 9, it says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another in the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Verse 9, if we confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So confessing your sins, humbling yourself before God, coming to him, confessing that you are a sinner and that you need God and you need his Holy Spirit and you need the blood of Jesus and get in covenant with the Lord today. Okay, so being saved, if you do commit yourself to him and repent Mm -hmm. and you tell God, I will serve you to the best of my ability, 
I will give my life to you and I will be obedient to you from this day forth. Mm -hmm. He will fill you with your spirit, uh, with his spirit. People need to ask God to be filled, yes, right? Yes, I agree. Okay, but what they don't know is that this is the beginning of the battle. Yes. This will end it to some degree. Mm -hmm. You can have a more powerful person inside of you mm -hmm. that will help you to live according to John's gospel, chapter 1, verse 12. Yes. Mm -hmm. You can live the power. Jesus said, I will give you power. Yep. So if people want more power in their life today, they need to learn that the lust nature is what pulls you down. It helps you to believe a lie. Am I yes, right? Th that's Amen. the truth. And I believe people have to have a mindset and a direction set to grow in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And people get complacent and thinking, oh, I'm saved now. I'm just good. And I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, I'm good. No, you have to have a direction in your mindset to grow further and know more of the Lord. So I believe that we today, we need to know that the battle just begun when you get saved. The next battle is, is staying free. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because the devil wants to come back. Yes. And he wants to get a hold of you in some way. That's right. right. Now, you can look at things like Galatians in that book. Mm -hmm. It was all about the Jews that came in. And wanted to tell them, well, you know, you need the eternal covenant of circumcision. Mm -hmm. You know, you can still be a Christian, but you need to believe in circumcision. And, you know, you can look at books like Colossians 2, 16 and 17, where he said, you know, Paul had these people free from all of the Jewish stuff. Mm -hmm. And they said, okay, you know, don't let anybody judge you, Paul did, about, you know, new moons and Sabbath days and all these blood moons and this stuff. Mm -hmm. holy days and what you eat or drink and so forth like this because that's not going to save you right so you know we need to know there is a battle out here with all this stuff they haven't changed any Amen. are they still doing the same thing they've always done about putting something in your life to cast a stumbling block before you yes and, and i see that's you know in hebrews 13 it says jesus christ the same yesterday today and forever it's always been like this the word of god is established it's going to be here forever they're doing the same things and the same trickery all the way from Genesis, and it's going to go all the way to Revelations to everything is come to a head. Amen. And it says in 2 Peter chapter 3, 17 and 18, Ye therefore, beloved, seeing that you uh, know these things before, he says you know these things before, he says beware, lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. But he says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Well, that's very good scripture. That's two times in this book he tells you the possibility of backsliding. Right. I think many people today that don't protect their mind, mm -hmm. they let their kids watch anything, they themselves watch anything, and you know, they'll sit down and bite the apple by saying, oh, I'm going to unwind with some television. That's crazy. People today need to throw the television out in the street and don't ever look at it or play with it again. When I was 12 years old, 10 years old, they told me about that stuff. But, you know, I didn't believe them. I didn't know what to say. But today we're fighting the battle, and America, the United States predominantly, is losing the battle by brainwashing. And so we are fighting these kind of battles today. The next thing, learning to feed yourself mm -hmm. by the Spirit of the Lord learning to open up the scriptures, and learning to live a certain lifestyle. Tell us about the road to being a great soldier. Tell us about that road, Brother Mark. Well, as you say, an open the word of God, when Matthew 4, 4 says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So, no, so knowing the word of God and knowing this and getting it down into you. And, you know, I'm going to tell you, just opening the word of God and reading it. Yes, that's good and all. But you're going to want to go a little bit deeper. You're going to want to continue as you become saved, like with uh, John 1, 12, you become, have the power to become the sons of God. You're going to want to have that knowledge. And then you want to accumulate another knowledge on uh, so forth as coming against these false prophets, coming against lust and, and mortifying it in your life. So we see here that... This 
this is going to be a road to success for you is the word of God and studying and, and to a deeper understanding of these things to meditate upon the word of God and meditate upon it, get it in your mind, get it as, as a fixture so you can call it out that you can use that Holy Spirit's power to bring forth the word of God when the devil's trying to uh, tempt you or where situations arise where you can speak the word of God out and then it can't accomplish something in your life. Well, getting your mind fixed is very important. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to get things out of your mind, Melanie, and put things into them at the same time. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of people don't understand how important it is to feed your mind. And a lot of people have no idea how to do that. Yeah. Tell us a little bit how to feed your mind. Well, firstly, the best way, like we said, you must be born again and understand that there's a fleshly lust nature and that there is the spirit. Um, that you must walk in that Galatians chapter 5 tells you about the spirit and the flesh so knowing those different two and knowing how to cut the lust nature off which wars against your soul um, Ephesians four twenty two and 23 I like these um, and also 24 of Ephesians chapter 4 it tells you to put off some some things <clears throat> Because if you want to put on the new man, you want to have a new mind, um, be a new creature in Christ Jesus, there are some things you got to get rid of. Because you can't have the old man and the new man living in the same place at the same time. Somebody has to go. Something has to go. So Ephesians 4.23 says, Be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness, and holiness. So it tells you to put off these things. Put off the old man. Don't walk in the flesh. Don't walk in the lust. Cut it off. And one way I say by cutting it off, like Pastor always says, cutting off the TV, cutting off the world, cutting off certain friends, and feed the God nature. It takes time to fast, to pray, to seek the Lord, and to walk in the Spirit. Okay, let's talk about one other phase now about escalating your growth. And about how to come into the greater knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. I want you to tell us a little bit about First Timothy uh, and about scriptures like uh, 4.13, 14, 15. Because I believe this is an idea that's taught throughout the scriptures. I believe it's taught Deuteronomy chapter 6, Joshua chapter 1. Mm -hmm. And it's also taught here in First Timothy chapter 4. And if you don't learn this idea, you're going to be very limited as to not only to your activities and what you can do. You're never going to be a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. As a matter of fact, you might not even be saved in the end. Yep. But tell us how important this idea is and what it goes to, Mark. Well, we see in 1 Timothy chapter 4... And I'm going to read verse 14 and 15 and 16. It says, Neglect not the gift that is in thee which was given thee by the prophecy with the laying on of hands by the Presbyterian. Meditate upon those things. Give thyself wholly unto them that the profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and to them that hear thee. So the ideal here is to escalate your God nature, is to meditate upon it. As you even uh, shared, even in Psalms 1-2, it says, meditate upon it day and night. So we're to meditate upon it. And, and this meditate, it means to revolve in the mind. And if you think about some kind of a, a windmill revolves, and if you harvest the energy, it creates a, a power within you. So we understand as you meditate upon these things, read the word of God, write it down. Go and pray about it. Ask God for help. Make it a part of your life that you may be able to save yourselves and those that will hear you. Okay, most of these people can't do that, Mark. But if you notice the first verse you mentioned, it talked about the gift of God that's within you. So tell us a little bit, Michelle, about the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit helping him. It's is what Paul is in insinuating here right. in teaching, how the Holy Spirit helps people to meditate and the Spirit takes the stuff that you think on in your mind and puts it in your heart. Amen. Well, we know that the gift is the Holy Ghost that he imparted unto them. And um, the Holy Ghost, what it does, according to St. John chapter 14, it brings the Word of God back to our remembrance. And you have to get the Word of God in your mind and in your heart in order for the Holy Ghost to bring it out. Because he can't bring anything out that's not in your heart. 
Well, the Spirit actually writes it in your heart, doesn't yes, it? Yes, he does. So, so you me. use the Spirit to meditate. Yes. And then you've got uh, Joshua's uh, book, uh, Melanie. Mm-hmm. We know that the book of Joshua, he tells them to be strong. Yep. And he tells them how to be strong in the mm-hmm. book of Joshua, chapter 1. Tell us yep. a little bit about that. Um, three different times, actually, he stated in this Joshua, chapter 1, only be thou strong and very courageous. Um, and in doing so, he says, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day in, day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So in doing this, meditating upon the Lord, you'll have good success. You'll have peace, and you'll prosper. And your soul will grow. Now, Michelle, tell us about Deuteronomy chapter 6, because he gives you the idea here about keeping your children saved, and this is where we've went so wrong today. We don't stay with our scriptures. We don't stay with our Bible. And now we've got this idea going out through the world by those people that call themselves the United Nations that want to control the whole world. They want the children and the teachers to call their children gender neutrals. And they want to tell the children that, oh, you can decide later if you're going to be a boy or a girl. This is what Second Peter 2 is talking about, cursed children. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you put this mind in the mind of a child I think it's very evil. Tell us what people missed out in Deuteronomy 6, starting with about verse 3 or 4. Yes, he says, And thou shalt, um, thou, that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I have commanded thee, thou and thy son and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, that, thou, that, that thy days may be prolonged. He says also in verse 6 and 7, he says, And these words which I commanded thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and thou shalt walk, talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine head, and they shall be frontless between thine eyes. Okay, this is the origin of the phylacteries. Whenever they made the little box with the scriptures on them. Mm-hmm. And this was fulfilled by the Holy Spirit. Another way, right? Yes. So what Paul talks about in 1 Timothy chapter 4 is actually the fulfillment here mm-hmm. of the putting them between their eyes. Read yes. that to them again. It says, uh, And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. So when the Holy Spirit comes and he helps you to put your hand to the plow, yes, that's the word of God. And then whenever the Holy Spirit helps you to meditate in the word of God, this is actually a fulfillment of that part of the phylacteries which they had it in their mind, right? Right. So Jesus said in Matthew five seventeen, what? I fulfill the law. Amen. I mean, he was the Jubilee. Mm-hmm. That's all Jesus. He set us free. Amen. Amen. St. John 1, 1. And the word was beginning, and the word was God, and the word was with God. Okay. Tell us, Melanie, how we can help the people here and where we're going from here. Uh-huh. There was one more thing as you were stating that Deuteronomy chapter 6. Um, I like to share verse 5, and it also goes along with Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. And, you know, as we're talking about our mind, we have to realize that our, our mind and our heart They go together because what we get in our mind gets in our heart and it actually gets in our soul and then we start craving it. So if you're feeding the lust, then it gets in your mind and your your heart and then your soul is going to start desiring it and craving it. In Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 5 it says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And over Matthew 22 verse 37, Jesus said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And so loving the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind is necessary. Not just your actions, not just your word, but in deed and in truth, it's important. So when people get baptized in television today, that means that they don't love the Lord that God with all their heart Brother. because... They let that stuff get in it. That's most definitely sure it's going to create a personality within you. So we got a lot of people today that don't know how to protect themselves. Now, we taught them how to actually use the Holy Spirit to put the Word of God in them. 
Let's talk about scriptures in first, uh, Second Timothy chapter 4. We've got a couple minutes there. One of you guys tell us about Second Timothy 4 because it says in this book uh, that they should know that we are living in the times when men do not endure sound doctrine. And it talks again, as Michelle brought out in one of our programs, that it's because of lust. Mm -hmm. Yes. But lust can be gotten rid of if people, like you said, Brother Mark, if they give their life to Jesus, and if they confess their sins, like Melanie said, they can be sprinkled with the blood, and that actually adopts them in to the family of God. They're bought and paid for with the blood of Jesus Christ, and they become a, as I want to say, rock-solid member of the family of God. Mm -hmm. They're an adopted son with equal rights. Am I right? That's right. We're joint heirs. So the Holy Ghost is inside of us and helped us with this. Well, you said mention that, and it's in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. And this is what, what we're dealing with, and it says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having ishing ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. So we see here that this is the times we're living in. The, 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 we gave you a cure-all according to the Holy Spirit and His Word, meditating upon these things, how you escape these things. As we see these things approaching the much the more in Hebrews 10, 24 through 26, we're to go to church more. We're to give an attendance more. And I'm sorry to say that there's a lot of false churches out here, so you need to be able to get into the Word. You need to be able to watch all things. You need to make foolproof of your ministry. You need to be able to seek God. You need to ask God to help you out in these things. And you need to know that the Word of God is going to what generates this power. It's what the Holy Spirit is going to live off. It's what the Holy Spirit lives off of. It is the Word of God. And we understand that we're living in these last times where people are heaped to their, to their lust, where they're seeking after lust, where they're preaching a lustful doctrine, where they're not teaching these things such as repentance. Having a repentant heart is what must, you must have. Amen. There's things, you know, as Brother Mark was stating about, um, there's many bad churches out there, so to say. Some things to look forward um, for the bad teachers or bad churches I'd say um, if they're basing upon money, um, avaricious, greedy of gain, um, make sure they're not government, so to say, government churches. Jesus says, beware of the leaven of Herod. You know, those people that are in the government setting out, so to say, churches that at the end are false prophets and false apostles. Watch out for them. Um, those are a couple. And Jesus said in Luke 4.18, he came to preach unto the poor. So if they're preaching about being rich, consuming upon money, I'd say watch out for those type of people. What about the sexual movement, Michelle? Yes. Is that a good church to stay away from? Most definitely. So sexual perversion has always been a damnable sin. Yes. It's going to be a part of taking the mark of the beast. Amen. You can actually see that in Daniel chapter 11, verse 37, mm -hmm. where he's a homosexual. And you can know that the whole world is going there because Revelations 13, 15 says the whole world will worship the beast. Mm -hmm. So anybody that's going along with the world, yes. they're going to actually worship what? the beast. They're going to take the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. And that's really sad where we live at today. So one of the things, stay away from the government because the government is trying to get everybody to go along with the world and not the Bible. Right. They're going to lay down all of these laws. They're going to try to change our Bible from what it is. So you have to avoid these kind of places. Yeah. Now we have to watch them out because over here in America, they got this Black Life Matters. Yeah. And these groups have nothing to do with God. Mm -hmm. And they've got some of these big churches that are lining up, letting the LGBT get up there and cause their people to be mentally ill by telling them, a man, that you can cut your private member off and become a woman. Mm -hmm. Is that mental illness or not? Definitely. So that's kind of where we're going. And I pray right now that people would find a good church everywhere in the world, give their life to Jesus Christ, make a commitment to him, and to know that you don't have to be involved with lust Jesus will give you a greater nature, make you a greater person. He'll write your name in his book. In Revelations 20, verse 12, one day that book will be open and your name will be read out as being in the book of life. My name is Brother Inman. You spell my name I-N-M-A-N. I believe that God wants you to be a great person if you're listening to my voice now. 
I want you to write to me. Get a pencil in your hand. Write down my address. It's 518 Pleasant Valley Avenue. Again, you spell my name, Inman, I-N-M-A-N. Or you can write to the Word of Deliverance, 518 Pleasant Valley Avenue, Dayton, Ohio, 45404. I hope you've enjoyed our program. Please write to me if you do. My email address is Pastor Inman, I-N-M-A-N, at A-T-T dot net. Have a great day. <laughs>